Hello everyone, I'm Rafi. I'm going to speak about floppy drive music and my adventure actually being my way to other projects from there. So for those who are not familiar with the term yakshiving, there is just one definition. Any seemingly pointless activity which is actually necessary to solve a problem, which solves a problem which several levels of recursion later solves a real problem we're working on. So you have a project and then in order to do it, you do something else and then by the end of the day you're just mucking around with config files and writing scripts and then someone asks you, like, I'm supposed to work on that project, is it? What does it look like I'm doing? And that's, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna, Usually you want to minimize the actual thing. <laughs> so you, you want to minimize that say, because at worst it's like it's time wasting or at best it's like productive procrastination. But then I agree that it can be a good thing if you just want to learn things, if you want to move on to other projects and keep the excitement of programming alive. So one of my projects was making music with floppy drives. So I was not even work. So sound, someone mentioned yesterday, is just like air that moves at some frequency. And every note, every sound has a frequency. So a middle delay would be 440 hertz, for example. And this is a floppy drive with the top remove and where the arrow points, it's the end. It's like a real trees of data and it just moves back and forth. So you only have to, to make sound of that. You just have to somehow make the motor move at the right frequency and then you should hear something that sounds kind of like the note is supposed to sound like. And what you do is that, that's this is the bag with some pins and you just send the right voltage to the right pin at the right time and then the motor will move. So I use an Arduino to do that. Turns out you only need three of these pins uh, to control the motor. And basically you just, the, the song is like a list of pairs, like it's a note and play that note for that many seconds, and play that note for that many seconds, and, and so on. Uh, but Arduino doesn't have much memory, doesn't have an OS or let alone any file system, so kind of only way to do is to put some bytes into memory, and I have some bytecode, and so this is like Mary had a little m. So this is like the first few bytes, say like the length of the song, and then does a track, and then, you know, note 64 for that many milliseconds, and so on and so on. And needless to say, this is not really user friendly. Uh, if I want to, you know, think about some other song I want to play, I have to sit down and try to encode it like that, and it doesn't work. So I thought there's all this music around that, uh, like maybe I can use some other format and convert it to that. So there's MIDI files, like MIDI protocol. It's like a standard protocol for describing music. And you know, if you were on the internet. 15 years ago, like the background music on some web pages was mostly MIDI files playing. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're all over. So I said, I'm gonna write the program. Uh, somehow I wrote that in C. Like today I would make a different choice probably, but this is just an example of the many, many lines of code. And this works pretty good, and it's all right. Uh, but there's still so many edge cases that I didn't get. And then if I wanna, I think about a song, uh, I have to find that song. I, I'm not a musician. I cannot play. I cannot just take a keyboard and, and play my song. So I needed to do something else. So yeah, I cannot play music, but I know how to whistle. Uh, I can whistle a song and a tune. So I thought maybe I can just record myself whistling a tune and add a, a program, extract the melody from it, and then convert it. Uh, <laughs> so that was that was my next thing. So how does it even work? So this is a thing called a discrete Fourier transform or the Fourier transform and it's amazing. Basically, you just take a signal, and then it's like you can convert between time and frequencies. So it's easier with the image. Like on the left, there's it's like a signal. You can it's just some sound. You can see there's like a lower, like the mountain, like a lower frequency, and an higher one. And then when you put it through the machine of the Fourier transform, you get what's on the right, which is you kind of see that the dominant frequency is like there's a lower one that's dominant, and the, the other one, and so as we remember, a note is a frequency, so you know, I can just take my recording and then run it through the Fourier transform and get a note. At least that, that's the main idea. So start with a, some waveform, split it into windows, like kind of a second or as small as you want to go, and you run the Fourier transform on all these windows and then you get dominant frequency, the, the note. Oh, by the way, just use a, so the algorithm to do that, it's called a fast Fourier transform. It's like what the most amazing algorithm of 20th century. It's like ties up lots of computer science fun 
like dynamic programming, recursion, taking some naive, it's naively like n square complexity, but it, it goes to n log n, so check it out. Uh, so yeah, and then this frequency, we kind of normalize them to, forgot to mention, like MIDI files, like every, every node is a number from zero to 147. So, see, it's just a standard for the music industry. Maybe I should do that as well. So I kind of round up or down all the nodes, and then you can aggregate the like consecutive nodes. And then you get a list of pairs, which is pretty close to what we want. Like say, play note 62 for four units of time, and so on. And this is not quite perfect. Yeah. Like the output is very noisy. So there's a, I suppose like this is the one, the third one you say, it's only last for one. And you might think that it might be an error, like it, maybe it's like really 64, but it's like by going from the higher note to the other one, it's, it just picks up, I was out of, my whistle was out of tune, maybe. So you might want to, or maybe you want it is too fast and you want to make it uh, slower, so maybe you want to double the duration of all the, all the notes. And, but this is a pretty cool, like simple data structure, like a list of pairs, so we can just filter, like pass some functions and compose them. So I filter, as long as, long as it takes a list of pairs and output a list of pairs, you can you know, compose some of these functions. So I guess some filters that, you know, for example, to drop the short notes and then double the duration and then get, and you, you use whatever functions you need to get to whatever you, you want. And then finally, you just, uh, you can emit it to the backend, like a MIDI file or the floppy bytecode or to JSON because you can. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so this works. And I mean, it's, it's way better than encoding my end already. So, but it's not, you know, sometimes it just, there's a note that's a bit, it's a bit out of tune. You, and you just, it would be so easy, like it's a graphical interface. Just click on it and just move it up a bit, and that would be it. But with, you know, with this functions, you need to have, you know, you know. Um, so I thought maybe I could do a graphical interface. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know anything about like Canvas or HTML5 stuff, so. Oh, basically I didn't know anything about any of these things before <laughs> as well, so. Uh, so that's an early kind of screenshot of how it kind of looked. No drag and drop yet, we have to click and then press a button so it moves. And, but basically I just, I, I used some library and then I customized it a lot to do what I wanted. And then when things didn't really work out properly, I will uh, try to, you know, things didn't appear, I will just do some random call to like canvas.render all and it worked, so I say, oh, this is fine. <laughs> and then lots of things like that. And now I'm, I got to a point where I'm, I'm really stuck. <laughs> like I, I kind of dug myself into a hole with all these careless hacks and like fixes and so I, so I cannot really reproduce a minimal example to get help or to debug and so so that's where I'm at now. It's a bit of anti-climax. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so my, it still hasn't been, you know, I'm, I've got lots of plans for this orc. I want a whole orchestra. I want it maybe maybe make it interactive and I have all these ideas and I'm nowhere close. You know, I have just been doing all these other things instead. <laughs> but it's a I think it's a very cool thing that I did that because I learned lots of new things and I'm still not done. I was at PyCon and then I got some ideas maybe with the iPython notebook, maybe I could do something with the graphics or <laughs> I've been told that Caro okay, editor file editors are MIDI, so maybe I can you know, uh, you know, go to karaoke and floppy drives, and there's all these ideas that I, so I'm, stu I'm stuck for now, but if you have ideas, I'm happy to get some help, 30 seconds, so, yeah, so, do stuff that you don't know about, and just keep on going, and this is, uh, from GitHub, the f my, it's called a Flopkestra, uh, it's not quite, it's not quite an orchestra yet, uh, because Arduino doesn't allow, like, you cannot fork a process on Arduino, so, uh, yeah. Uh, Gezuyi is my program to extract, it's a, a pun in French, it, you can uh, ask me later. And there's a video there, this is a small teaser. Um, check it out. Thank you.